Hi, hello, welcome to my channel, Laugh, Love, Read, I'm Kay, and yes, dear viewer, today we are talking about Bridgerton. Um, we are talking about the book series, the Netflix series, and all that is good and bad um, with both, essentially. But I thought I would make it a little bit more fun and um, tier rank. So if you don't know what tier ranking is, basically you rank. Um, things from like bad to great etc so there's different like um, categories and ranks if you can see my screen there um, and that's what we're doing so I'm gonna tier rank the books the book characters um, as well as the Netflix characters and then I will tell you what's different from the books and the Netflix show in regards to characters and plot lines and stuff um, and yeah let's get started a note on the intro i would have done a voiceover with a british accent and sounded like julie andrews but my british accent is kind of rusty so decided to just keep it in writing um so let's get started i'm going to actually start screen recording this Okay, so we are ready to go. Um, here we go. So the books, start with the books, right? That's where it started. So let me actually put this in order. We have um, the Duke and I, which is Simon and um, Daphne. And that's basically the first season for the show. Then we have the Viscount Who Loved Me, which is Anthony and Kate. An offer from a gentleman, which is Benedict and Sophie. Romancing Mr. Bridgerton, which is Penelope and Colin. You're getting spoilers already if you have no intention of reading the books. We have To Sir Philip with Love, which is Eloise and Philip Crane, Sir Philip Crane. When He Was Wicked, which is Francesca and Michael. And uh, It's In His Kiss, which is Hyacinth and Gareth. And On the Way to the Wedding, which is Gregory and Lucy. Or really, it was send up, but... Okay, so... <clears throat> ranks tier ranking here I just have kind of a general rank which is what I would do for any book so not specifically towards like the Bridgerton series but just any books so why just why which is basically why did anybody write this book who would like it what what no just the worst right um then we have not my thing but I'm sure someone somewhere will like it which is just in my opinion bad but feel like you know somebody will like it bleh just okay it's whatever i couldn't care about it one way or the other mm. and then good i guess which means it's a little bit better than okay but not quite great either then we have great but not quite there yet which is great like it's a good book it's a really good book but it's missing a little something to be like a five star or like one of my favorite books right ultimate perfection is ultimate perfection it is a five star it is perfect i loved it amazing right okay so we'll do this in order we have the duke and i and um this was just okay Bleh, just okay i really kind of want to put this in that not my thing but i'm sure someone somewhere will like it because um yeah daphne is boring um yeah <laughs> she's kind of boring she's problematic and the story um has some like gaps um in it so she'll you, you know you have an event happening and then two weeks go by and nothing happens in those two weeks we're kind of back to where we were 
in the last chapter but it's been two weeks and it's just kind of like time passing for time passing sake and normally i like to see right a lot of time pass in my books but it has to be with some development right things have to happen it has to be to serve the plot or serve the characters in some way some form and that just like was not the case um i didn't uh, feel their love connection that much like it was just uh i hate miscommunication plots like like if you would just talk to each other i don't know maybe you know you would fix your shit and there was some of that going on here as well so just yeah whatever um i only kept going because really with the series because i wanted to read all of them and i wanted to see what in the world happens with colin and penelope um and so i kept going and it was the viscount who loved me and this is ultimate perfection for just regency for romance like it was it's sort of a um, enemies to lovers kind of thing right like they start not liking each other or not so much not liking each other but um you know anthony finds kate annoying kate is trying to save her sister from anthony's attentions and stuff because she thinks he's a horrible influence and um you know he's gonna ruin her i like their story going from you know frenemies to lovers and um there was some emotional stuff in here you get to see anthony's character and kind of everything he's feeling not just about her but like his life like it was actually some deep stuff happening with him and you know having lost his father at um the time in his life that he did and what you know him being by count really means and like head of the family and all of that so it was really really sweet i loved it it was perfect um then we have an offer from a gentleman which is benedict and sophie and it's good i guess um this is like a Cinderella retelling and I'm not that big of a fan of Cinderella in the first place um and this book was just like so much was happening um to Sophie and so much was you know like it, it was a lot um and it, it seemed a bit unrealistic for Regency times to me but it, you know it was like more reasonable than what happens in to sir philip with love with like i don't know like i'll talk about louise in a bit but sophie at least has a reason for making bad choices like those are the only choices she has available to her you know keep that in mind just so good i guess i mean the romance was cute they were cute um i wanted to slap benedict really kind of but you know whatever um <laughs> not realizing that it's her and all of that just come on buddy but uh yeah good romancing mr bridgerton um was i am I'm, I'm debating between great but not quite there and good i guess um i, I really i i don't know um i think like it's good i guess i really want to put it into great but not quite there because i i love colin um but this book was just not great it was good but not great um i was looking forward to seeing how colin reacts to penelope's secret in the book and um it wasn't that impactful and then the reveal to everybody else wasn't explored as much um there weren't many consequences so it was a little bit of a let down the romance aspect was cute but not not amazing you know like i got some butterflies um but could have been better you know 
to Sir Philip with love. Not my thing, but I'm sure someone somewhere will like it. Um, this 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 book was a mess. I mean, <laughs> Eloise is supposed to be smart, but really she makes really dumb choices or really dumb choice here without even thinking about like the consequences and then just oh I didn't even think about that like you've been plotting this for how long and you didn't think about that are you dumb like you're not supposed to be dumb but that's very dumb so the whole premise was just like annoying me and I don't even feel the romance they're both kind of dry and it felt a little bit forced um not so natural and just the kids, their kids there involved, you know, and it's just, um, I would have liked to see more of a connection between her and the kids and him and the kids. Like, he's a pretty shitty father, okay? And she's all like, oh, he's doing his best, I guess. Like, no, 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 he's not. Then when he was wicked, um, when he was wicked is great but not quite there and this one is also a little bit of a hot mess but it works um basically francesca and michael are friends and he's really um francesca's dead husband's cousin so but the moment he saw her he was in love with her and he's been in love with her for years and years and years and um when his cousin dies he like distances himself basically um from francesca because he doesn't know how to like act around her because he still wants her and he feels like super guilty that like now technically you know he can go for it but you know his cousin's dead and he wants to like respect his memory and he feels like he's betraying him by even thinking about her and like how he somehow wished his death or something and yeah like very complex stuff it has a lot of guilt and just a lot of emotions which i really enjoyed and um yeah however the only thing with this book is like he spends like six years being in love with her well, she's engaged to Michael and then marries him like four or six years, something like that. And then spends like four years away from her um, and then comes back and all of a sudden things start moving along and they get together and all of that, right? But my problem is there's a whole thing like he makes such a big deal out of his cousin um, and respecting him and his, his memory and feeling guilty. And then when he does like make a move on her when, you know, they're finally together like two weeks go by and he doesn't even think about his cousin and then all of a sudden he's like oh shoot i wasn't even thinking about him like you been feeling guilty for eight years and you went two weeks without thinking about him like at no point during those two weeks did you go oh shit like eh. no um also it's just you know Francesca was just like she needed to get her life together and um, at the end there it just she dragged it a little bit too much too long and just yeah. but the emotions it was very cute um, <clears throat> it's in his kiss is Hyson and Gareth and um, this one is I don't know if it's great or good I guess um I'm gonna go with with good I guess because Gareth Gareth is problematic. Um <laughs> he does a thing um that's not very nice. Um to kind of get hyacinth and he knows that what he's doing is wrong and he's doing it to like hide a secret basically and it's pretty messed up even though he ends up like revealing what it is um that was not okay but like everything else was great um i mean hyacinth 
the whole like hyacinth is so much to handle and all of this was like kind of annoying because really she's just a regular girl but because i guess you know it's regency times i'm gonna let it go um but yeah the romance um they were cute there was some courting interactions like there's reasons why right like they're into each other which is what i like to see um and you know some steamy steamy stuff also so there's that and then we have on the way to the wedding which is um gregory and lucinda and that is ultimate perfection so gregory and lucinda kind of start off um a little bit similar to i guess anthony and kate not so much um enemies or frenemies but kind of just being friendly right like talking to each other and not like no romancing whatsoever like just legit friends and then from that things happen things build like it's really their friendship is really explored and then their romance um it's kind of a little bit of a slow burn it builds slowly and then it's kind of like boom and it's very dramatic um but i loved it it was done really really nice it was a good kind of dramatic whereas like an offer from a gentleman just felt very overly dramatic and sir philip with to sir philip with love things that happened there were just a little bit unrealistic to me so um yeah those are the book rankings we have not my thing but i'm sure someone somewhere will like it for to sir philip with love then bleh just okay we have the duke and i good i guess we have an offer from a gentleman romancing mr bridgerton and it's in his kiss great but not quite there when he was wicked and then ultimate per per perfection ultimate perfection we have the viscount who loved me and on the way to the wedding so that's it let's move on to the british hens and their love interests well let me move over lucinda over here so this is me tier ranking how i feel about the book characters and their respective you know significant others right so all the bridgertons and their significant others um and this was let me put this actually in order of the books as well and you know i tried to match it a little bit here to the book covers you know Penelope. yes here we are okay so i think that's it so we have for the characters ill who even likes you problematic um inconsistent or slightly annoying redeemable you know you do some questionable things but you can redeem yourself um likable enough right me and then adorable charming you know just overall good person um but you know there's something missing there and then of course we have bay which is just i love you completely you are my favorite character basically in all of the series all of the bridgertons you're my fave um so we have daphne and daphne is just problematic um there's definitely you know that scene that scene in the book and then that scene in the show and problematic um and just really childish like just talk to your husband just talk to each other okay okay by that essence simon is also problematic because you know he he knows what what he's doing to ha to her okay he knows that's wrong and he feels guilty about it but you're still do it and you think like oh i'm not lying but you're you're not telling the truth and you're problematic for it sir um 
And then we have Anthony, and Anthony is just Bay. Anthony is just a king. He is sweet and caring, loves his family, like he will do anything for his family, and he's just precious, all around precious. Um, Kate is, you know, she is, she is adorable, okay? She's cute, she's a good person, she is not problematic but she's you know just not amazing yeah so benedict bridgerton is likable enough he doesn't really do anything wrong he's not problematic um but i mean there's just something something about him that just You know, it's it's kind of whatever. Um, same thing with Sophie. Likeable enough, like she's really resilient and all of that. But um, I just I don't care. <laughs> Colin is adorable. He is funny. He's always hungry. I feel like I relate. Um, but, um, just, just not, not Anthony. Penelope is big. Okay. Um, she is adorable, smart, businesswoman. I mean, look at her, hello. And then she finally gets the man of her dreams and she like, stands her ground for what she wants and what she believes in and you know just, just it's all good she's she's yes um eloise inconsistent slightly annoying um same thing actually with crane but we're gonna put you right there okay um Eloise, again, is supposed to be so smart and makes really dumb decisions and she's just kind of like standing her ground, but then not and then just like, yeah, just it's annoying sometimes, you know, like just get a grip. Um, Philip is a shitty dad and but like fully pursues Eloise and just kind of dry he's just a little boring to be honest um doesn't really do anything exciting um so just uh francesca francesca is adorable she's kind of like the relevant bridgerton in my opinion because you wouldn't even know she's a Bridgerton because she's off in Scotland for like every book but her own, even her own, she's in Scotland <laughs> actually but like it matters because it's her book but um like they barely mention her like nobody else talks about her and but she's like different from the Bridgertons you know she's like different from her siblings and she's honestly a lot happened to her and uh, props to her for moving on and for falling in love again and willing, being willing to like put herself through that. I mean, she wasn't that willing to really put through it. She struggled a lot with it, but and you know, like I said, she kind of dragged it a little bit too much. Like, okay, girl, move on. It's okay. Um, but yeah, she's adorable. I like her. I like Francesca. Michael. Michael is redeemable, okay? Michael would be adorable, but um, he, you know, he does some, some things, something, thing, things, right? Like to get Francesca to be with him towards like the end of the book that, you know, I'm like, okay you know it's a little bit questionable not questionable but it's a little bit messed up but you know 
I like you. Despite everything, I like you. So, redeemable. Michael is redeemable. Um, but not, you know. Like, I feel like I should have switched these two because I feel like I like Michael better than Benedict and Sophie, so just keep that in mind. Um, Hyacinth is um, likable enough. She is supposed to be like all different and mighty and like smart mouth and all of this blah 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 but really she's just like average to me but because it's regency times 1800s whatever like i get it you're ahead of your time i guess um but yeah just i would have loved to see a little more oomph in her like she she's kind of quiet like she's got a smart mouth with everybody and everything but with gareth she's kind of like Oh, what? At the beginning and then, yeah. So, eh. Likeable enough. Gareth is redeemable. Um, He does some questionable stuff. Like I said, he actually, like, tries to get his way by doing something, you know, that he knows it's not really okay, but he wants hyacinth so he's gonna do it so he can get her um and like he knows it's wrong but he has every intention of you know being nice so it's okay but like he's doing it for the wrong reasons to hide a secret and not good it's you know pretty shady messed up but because he loves her she loves him and it's okay-ish um, it works out in the end, so redeemable. I like Gareth. Um, Gregory is... Gregory is Bay. He is kind of annoying sometimes, but, um, he is just, yeah, love Gregory. Um, at that point, actually, Lucinda is also Bay because she is, she's got a head on her shoulders. She makes logical decisions i mean for the most part like that logical decision was also kind of dumb like you're gonna trust this person just just like that but i mean i guess she didn't have a reason not to trust them so I'm, i'll give her the pass um but yeah she is um pretty good i love their relationship how it develops so yeah gregory is adorable he like really freaking expresses how he's feeling like this book was amazing and that like you you feel the anguish you feel all of the all of the emotions so that's why i loved it so much that's why i loved him so much um you kind of get to see his perspective on being a bridgerton and like being um so far apart in age to his siblings um please excuse all the noise the dogs are going crazy um <laughs> and yeah so you really get to see how he feels about his family and there's some cute stuff there so that is um the bridgerton characters the bridgertons and their love interests uh ranked so nobody in ill who even likes you uh we have daphne and simon in problematic eloise and philip in inconsistent slightly annoying and then michael and gareth in redeemable uh we have benedict sophie and hyacinth in likable enough and Kate, Colin, and Francesca in Adorable. Um, and we have Anthony, Penelope, Gregory, and Lucinda in Bay. Um, yeah, 